Hey guys, welcome to this amazing platform of PW. My name is Ishab, your physics teacher, and today we are going to have going to have a discussion on the most important points of the chapter light refraction and refraction. So guys, this is the mind map series. I will be giving you all the concept, the brief about all the concept that are most important from this chapter. So guys, basically in this chapter, what you have to study first of all, just learn all the cases, just learn all the cases of mirrors, guys. Mirrors consist most important part of this chapter. You have to remember, remember all the cases, right? We have concave, we have concave mirror, we have convex mirror, all cases related to the mirror, right guys? Then mirror formula, then mirror formula. lens formula right and all cases of lenses all cases of spherical lenses concave lens and convex lenses right so guys you should be knowing all these the this this contain most important part the mirror part and the lens part so we will be starting with the reflection part first so first is what is refraction of light basically refraction is the bouncing back of light for example if you drop a ball from this the, from this uh, height the ball will bounce back and come to my hand so this is bouncing back same happens with the light light is a phenomena of bouncing back of light in the same medium the ball or the light initially is in medium so it will be after reflection the light will come in the same medium this is the most important point in reflection the speed remains same and the medium remains same right on striking the surface of any object the ref the law of reflection the reflection is followed irrespective of the shape and size and the dimension of the obstacle right so basically we have laws of reflection in the light so let's say we have a light source here we have a light so uh, source here and the light so coming and the light ray so coming is incident ray the is the ray is reflected from this surface this is any plane surface at this point i have drawn a normal 90 degree to the surface and the light is reflected in the same medium this is angle of incidence the angle between the incident ray and the normal this is angle of reflection the angle between the normal and the reflected ray so guys by law of reflection angle i is equals to angle r what does the laws of reflection states angle i is equals to angle r and all the three rays lie in the same plane what do you mean by same plane it means that if we are looking uh, if let's say if i am looking towards the incident ray that means i cannot see the normal and the reflected ray it, let's say this is your incident ray right and if the normal is like this you can see both at the same time but if all the three lie on the same line if you are looking through the incident ray you cannot see normal and the reflected ray that means all lie in the same plane this is the meaning of the same plane so right so this is the statement of this law the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection and the incident ray the normal to the mirror at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane law of reflection this consists of two marks in your board exam state laws of reflection both you should be knowing now what are the characteristics of the plane uh, image formed by plane mirror plane mirror is the simplest object that is basically reflects the light ray so what are the various characteristics of the image formed by the plane mirror first is image is virtual and erect what do you mean by virtual virtual means it cannot be taken on a screen the images cannot be taken on a screen and it is erect erect means not upside down not upside down the top at the top of the head is same as the top of the image right next is size of the image is equals to size of object that is image height is equals to object height hi is equals to ho the image is formed as far behind the mirror as the object is at front that is image distance is equals to object distance and the image is literally inverted that means right to left and left to right light right will become left and the left of the object will become right of the image right this is literal inversion okay guys then we had read about the spherical mirror see the plane mirror cannot magnify the image it cannot make make it diminished it cannot make it enlarge what to have to do that we have to use spherical mirror so guys what is spherical mirror you can see it on a simple spherical mirror i can get the image of the whole field on this small mirror this is spherical mirror so spherical mirror basically these mirror 
consists of a part of the surface of a hollow glass sphere that means guys let's say if i take any hollow glass and if i cut it from here this is the part if i polish it from inside this will become convex mirror the outer surface is reflecting right this will become convex mirror and if i polish it from outside the inner part will be reflecting this is concave mirror this will become concave mirror so such spherical mirror can form the magnified image in which image size may or may not be equal to the object size image can be bigger than object it can be diminished than the object it can also be equal to the object clear guys so what are the different types of mirror i had told you first we have concave mirror inner surface is reflected it is bulged in can you see the reflecting the reflecting surface is is bulged in and the outer surface is reflecting this is called bulged out the convex mirror the convex mirror clear guys inner surface is polished then what are the various terms related to the mirror we have a aperture guys aperture is the effective diameter the area which can reflect the light rays is called aperture next is center of curvature center of curvature is the basically the c the glass sphere this is made up of a glass sphere every uh, this uh, the this is this a glass sphere uh, must be having some center this is called center of curvature and the radius of this sphere is called radius of curvature right so this is what is it, uh, is written here the center of the glass sphere of which mirror is a part is center of curvature and the radius of this sphere is called the radius of curvature of the mirror what is principal axis guys basically principal axis is an imaginary line imaginary line passing through the pole this is the pole this is focus and this is center of curvature right similarly here this is center of curvature this is focus this is pole so imaginary line joining stream an imaginary straight line joining these three points its principal axis next is principal focus guys principal focus means let's say if i take any concave mirror right and this is a focus this is center of curvature this is pole a number of rays coming parallel to the principal axis converge to focus after reflection from the mirror this point is called principal focus right what is focal length the distance of the focus from the pole is focal length and pole is the center part of the mirror the center part of the reflecting surface is called pole clear guys next is what are the various rule for image formation guys we should be knowing three types of rays in order to get the image formed by a mirror first is ray passing through principal focus second is ray passing through center of curvature third is ray passing through the pole let's have a look into them first is guys any ray any ray incident parallel to principal axis converges to focus this is normal ray angle of incidence angle of reflection any ray and this is for convex mirror this is for concave this is for convex ray coming parallel will be diverged you can see this is diverging mirror the ray has been diverged this is diverging mirror right but guys since this rays has the rays has been converged so this is converging mirror okay the ray has been converged like this next is any ray passing through focus will become parallel to principal axis after reflection from the mirror any ray coming parallel to principal axis will be diverged and appear to come from focus or appear to pass from focus in case of convex any ray passing through c this ray retraces its path any ray passing through center of curvature will retrace its path same here incident normal because this is normal incidence the ray has has to retrace its path next is any ray incident on the pole which reflected as it is obliquely i is equals to r same here i is equals to r clear so these are the four rays that you should be knowing now considering the ray diagram guys in ray diagram we have to start the object from infinity and just keep just bring it closer to the mirror so since first object is at infinity you can see we have taken two parallel rays and the image is formed at focus and what is the various nature the image basically it is real inverted and point size okay now bring the object closer to the uh, mirror you can see the now the image will go away as the object is coming towards the mirror so it has gone away so it is formed between c and f real inverted since the image can be taken on a screen and it is diminished next is now bring the object at center of curvature at center of curvature same size image is formed real inverted and it can be taken on a screen the object is up the image is upside down 
now bring the object more closer to the mirror between c and f and the image is formed beyond c it is real inverted as it is taken on a screen and it is enlarged in this case real inverted and enlarged next is now bring the object more closer the object will be at the focus and in this case the image is formed and infinity real inverted and highly enlarged the image keep the image size keeps on increasing last case is ob object between f and p here this is the only case where virtual erect and enlarged image is formed by a concave mirror right virtual erect and enlarged image is formed and this case finds many applications okay next is convex mirror it has only two cases it can only form virtual erect and diminished image first is object at infinity image is formed at focus second is bring the object closer to the mirror and the image is formed between p and f and it is virtual erect and diminished concave mirror cannot form virtual erect and enlarged it can form virtual erect concave mirror cannot form virtual erect and diminished image only convex mirror can form clear guys so this is the case of form by the convex mirror next is what are the various uses of convex mirror concave mirror see guys concave mirror can form a variety of images it can form real image it can form virtual image it can form diminished image it can form same size image it can also form enlarged image so a dentist has to see the enlarged image or so dentist uses the concave mirror to treat your teeth similarly in the reflector of the car in the reflector of the cars guys we have concave mirror since we have a concave back and the bulb is placed at the focus right guys so basically the bulb is placed at the focus so after reflection from the mirror we will get a parallel beam of light like this a high range is got similarly in dish antenna guys in dish antenna the rays come parallel to principal axis and they are converged at the focus we the receiver is capped at the focus and we and thus we get the signal so receiver is capped at the focus so here we are using the properties of the concave mirror what are convex mirror convex mirror can form real inverted and sorry virtual erect and a diminished image so it gives a wide field of view wide field of view is given by this convex mirror you can see you can get the image of the complete back you can get ima huge image the huge traffic can be taken on a small mirror this is the property of a convex mirror because it can form diminished image okay so it can wide of view it forms virtual erect and diminished image and diminished image clear now next is sign convention guys sign convention we have to take we have we have many things one of them is image distance object distance focal length image height object height these are the various parameters five parameters we have to know so pole is taken as a origin your pole works as a origin and distance to the right are positive distances to the left are negative distance to the upward direction in the upward direction are positive distances in the downward direction are negative same similarly cartesian plane same as cartesian plane x y plane okay now what is the mirror formula mirror formula is the relation between the focal length object distance and the image distance 1 upon f is 1 by v plus 1 by u and for magnification it is image ratio of image height to the object height h dash by h o h h simple and it is also related as minus v by u this minus is in the formula and keep one thing is mind all parameter should be kept with sign should be put with sign with proper sign take all parameters with proper sign guys otherwise answer will be wrong clear now what is refraction of light can you see this bending of light it appears that the pencil is broken the pencil is broken at this point it appears that you can see the arrow is inverted as, as i am watching it through the water you can also see the pattern is like this but as i am watching this pattern through a uh, uh, water the patterns appear to be inverted so what is the reason for this the reason for this is refraction of light which is the bending of light so refraction is known as the bending of light that is when light travels obliquely obliquely mean at a certain angle from to the interface it travels obliquely from one medium to another 
the direction of propagation of the light changes the direction changes it bends whether away from normal or towards the normal depending on the refractive index right so this is the normal this is incident ray this is refracted ray this is angle of incidence this is angle of refraction and you can see r is less than i because water is comparatively denser medium so light ray will bend towards the normal air is comparatively rarer medium clear so how does light ray refracted when passing through a glass slab we have taken a glass slab obviously denser than air so this is the angle of incidence the light ray will bend towards the normal and at this is this phase this is also our alternate angle and this is the emergent ray the final ray is the emergent ray and this e is the angle of emergence you can see if there were no glass slab it was supposed to go on this dotted path but because of the glass slab it has shifted by a certain distance this distance is called lateral displacement the perpendicular distance between the incident ray and the emergent ray is called lateral displacement clear what is refractive index this is the reason for the bending of light ray and is defined as the ratio of velocity light of or velocity of light in vacuum which is c to the velocity of light in the medium that is n is equals to c by v speed of light in uh, vacuum to the speed of light in that medium and n is obviously c is greater than v so n is always greater than 1 right laws of reflection laws of reflection same the normal ray the incident ray and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane in case of reflection i am looking through the incident ray i can i, I uh, cannot see the normal and the refracted ray next is the ratio of sign of angle of incidence is uh, and the to the sign of angle of reflection is constant sin i by sin r is constant in case of refraction and this constant is the refractive index of second medium with respect to the first medium that is n2 upon n1 is equals to v1 upon v2 right this is the this is the sin i by sin r is n2 upon n1 is equals to v2 uh, v1 upon v2 right speed of light in first medium is speed of light in second medium refractive index of second medium divided by refractive index of first medium clear what are spherical lenses guys see lens is a basically any uh, any curved uh, any basically uh, we can say a transparent made up of uh, it is made up of any transparent material that just bends the light ray so lens may have two spherical surfaces bulging outwards such lens is called convex lens convex lens means the spherical surface are bulged outward and if they are bulged inward this is concave lens the definition is this for the concave lens okay if it is bulged inwards so this is convex this is concave this is con convex by convex lens equal focal length the bulge outward this is by concave bulge inwards convex lens is converging why because rays coming parallel rays coming parallel to principal axis focus focuses on a point here this is diverging because it just spread the light rays like this it has gone away the light rays are gone away right so this is converging lens this is diverging lens right now what are the various terms related to the lenses first is a lens has two spherical surfaces that means it has two center of curvature that is guys this lens is made up of two spherical surfaces one is this one one is this one this surface must be having a center this surface must be having a center so the center of these two sphere that means a lens has two center of curvature one for the left surface one for the right surface two center of curvature means two radius of curvature this is r r2 and this is r1 clear so these are called center of uh, the, the each the center of this sphere is called center of curvature and the imaginary straight line passing through the two center of curvature let's say if i draw and the lenses right this is c2 this is c1 this is optical center the center part imaginary straight line joining these three is called principal axis center point of the lens is called optical center which is o right now lens has a certain area to reflect the light rays right this area is called aperture the effective diameter of the reflecting area refracting area this effective diameter denotes your aperture so the lens having more aperture can gather more amount of light rays right next is a ray of light uh, principal axis principal focus the ray coming parallel to the principal axis converge at a point on the focus right converge at a point on the focus this point is called focus right principal focus this is f2 right and the distance of f2 from this f uh, from o is called focal length clear 
नेक्स्ट इज इमेज फॉर्मेशन वॉट आर द वेरियस रूल वी हैव टू कंसिडर रे पासिंग थ्रू प्रिंसिपल फोकस पासिंग थ्रू ऑप्टिकल सेंटर एंड पासिंग थ्रू द पैरल टू प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस तो इफ आई टेक कॉन्वेक्स लेंस रे कमिंग पासिंग रे पैरल टू द प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस कन्वर्जिंग एट ए पॉइंट ऑन द फोकस रे पैरल डाइवर्जेस सो दिस इज डाइवर्जिंग द रे हैज गॉन अवे एंड इट अपेयर्स टू कम फ्रॉम एफ वन सिमिलरली इफ आई टेक एंड पास एनी रे थ्रू फोकस इट विल बिकम पैरल टू प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस पास एनी रो इंसिडेंट एनी रो ऑन द फोकस इट विल बिकम पैरल टू द प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस ऑफ द कॉन केव लेंस नेक्स्ट इज रे पासिंग थ्रू ऑप्टिकल सेंटर गोज अनडेविटेड सिमिलरली रे पासिंग थ्रू ऑप्टिकल सेंटर इन बोथ द केसेज द रे गोज अनडेविटेड थ्रू दिस पॉइंट दैट इज नो रिफ्रैक्शन टेक्स प्लेस नो रिफ्रैक्शन टेक्स प्लेस राइट नो वॉट आर द वेरियस केसेज फर्स्ट केस इज ऑब्वियसली द रे द ऑब्जेक्ट एट इन्फिनिटी तो एनी द रे कमिंग फ्रॉम द ऑब्जेक्ट एट इन्फिनिटी कन्वर्जेंट एट ए पॉइंट एफ टू This is called focus, right? Obviously, the image is real inverted, and it can be taken on a screen, and it is highly diminished. Here, the uh, bring the object more closer to the lens. The object will go away. The image will go away as the object come closer to the lens. The image has gone beyond between f2 and 2f2, and the image is real inverted and diminished, right? Now, bring the object more closer to the lens. So, as you do that, you will notice that the object is at 2f1. and the image is formed at 2f2 it is real inverted because it is it can be taken on a screen and it is of the same size okay next is bring the object more closer to the lens between f1 and 2f1 so our image will recede away it will go beyond 2f2 again real inverted can be taken on a screen and it is highly enlarged the size of the object is of the image is more than the size of the object bring the object more closer the image is formed at infinity real inverted and highly enlarged now bring the object more closer to the lens the image is formed on the same side of the object it is virtual erect obviously and cannot be taken on a screen so so uh, and also it is enlarged image so this is a case where convex lens form virtual erect and enlarged image for concave lens we have two cases first is object at infinity so it acts as a diverging lens and the image is fo is fo formed at the focus virtual erect and point size image here bring the object more closer to the lens so the image will be uh, between f1 and o1 uh, f1 and o sorry and the image will be virtual erect and what diminished concave lens now what are the lens formula and magnification we have a relation between object distance image distance and the focal length image object distance is v v is the image distance sorry v is the image distance guys u is the object distance right and magnification is ratio of image height by the object height it is ratio of image height h i upon h o right it is the ratio of h i upon h o which is v upon u this is magnification clear so you have to remember this now what is power now let's have a look on on the various signs of magnification so guys let me tell you in brief let me tell you in brief that see basically you should be knowing the sign of magnification also for various lenses and mirror we have various points of magnification for example if i talk about mirror if i talk about mirror guys we have many we have concave we have convex u v f m h i h o right guys so if i talk about this so object distance is negative for both concave mirror convex mirror concave mirror can form the image left hand side and also on the right hand side the image distance would be positive and negative convex mirror always forms the image on the right hand side it is positive focal length is for concave is negative for convex it is positive magnification it can form both real inverted and virtual image so magnification can be positive as well as negative it can form erect image so magnification is always positive right image height 
फॉर इमेज हाइट इट कैन फॉर्म इरेक्ट एंड इन्वर्टेड इमेज तो इमेज हाइट कैन बी पॉजिटिव एज वेल एज नेगेटिव इट ऑलवेज फॉर्म इरेक्ट इमेज तो इमेज हाइट इज ऑलवेज पॉजिटिव ऑब्जेक्ट हाइट इज पॉजिटिव इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द टाइप ऑफ मिरर एंड लेंस राइट इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द टाइप ऑफ मिरर एंड लेंस ओके नाउ गाइज इफ आई टॉक अबाउट लेंसेस सो वी हैव कॉन्केव वी हैव कॉन्वेक्स सेम पैरामीटर्स आर देयर U, V, F, M, H, I, H, O. Right, guys. So here U is negative again for both. Concave lens can form the image on the left hand side. That means image distance would be negative. It can form the image both on the left and on the right. So for convex lens, the image distance can be positive as well as the negative. Right. Focal length for concave lens is negative. For convex, it is positive. Very, very important. It's a summary chart for you people. It's a summary chart for you people. Okay. Magnification concave lens always form virtual erect and diminished image. So magnification would be positive. It can form both real and virtual image. It is negative and positive for convex lens. Image height. It can form erect image only. Image height is positive. Convex lens can form erect and inverted both. so it can be positive as well as negative object height is positive for both clear so this is the difference between the lenses this is the okay this is for mirror part this is for lenses part clear guys this is for mirror part and this is for lens part very very important summary chart that you should be knowing okay everybody now next part is power what is not not thank you my bad next is power c power is defined as the guys converging or the diverging capability converging or the diverging capability that means let's say if i take two lenses one is this and uh, other is this right let me draw it below this other is let's say other is this so guys if i talk about the power let's say that this lens converges the rays here at this point right and let's say this ray converges the rays at this point so which what do you think which has more converging ability obviously this lens this lens has more converging ability this lens has more converging ability this lens has less converging ability that means it has less power less converging ability means less power more converging ability means this lens has more power and you can also notice one thing this lens has more focal length but this lens has more focal length this lens has more power but it has less focal length so what can you say isn't it the power and the focal length are inversely proportional power and the focal length are inversely proportional so power is defined as the reciprocal of the focal length reciprocal of the focal length so it is the converging and the divergence of the light rays achieved by a lens is expressed in terms of its power it is defined as the reciprocal of the focal length reciprocal of the focal length okay so si unit of power is diopter we denoted by capital d the si unit for power is diopter and keep one thing in mind the focal length should be in meter in order to calculate the power the focal length should be in meter guys should be in meter right for example let's say if i take power as if i take focal length as 25 cm so it is 25 upon 100 which is 1 by 4 meter so power has to be 1 upon f which is plus 4 diopter so guys power is the sign of power is same as that sign of uh, this uh, focal length for concave for concave lens power is negative and for convex lens the power is defined only lenses only in lenses only it is positive right since focal length is positive accordingly power is positive focal length is uh, negative accordingly power is negative okay guys is this clear fine 
so we are done with this mind map of the light chapter so i hope you all have enjoyed the session okay so just write down your doubts in the comment section i will go through them okay guys so see you all bye